What's up guys, Trevor here and welcome back to another week's video. In this week's video, we're going to talk about what would I do if I were to restart and get into, in, into e-commerce for the very first time. So I always wanted to make this video because I'm at a point where I feel like this is probably what I'm going to do for the next um, at least many years, but as a, as a baseline because this is not going to be what I do for eternity, obviously. Um, this is going to be my cash flow business, which is my e-commerce business. But for people that are just get into e-commerce and they don't know what to do, there's so many options out there. There's so many things you can do within e-commerce. This is what I would, if I were to restart from zero without, you know, having experience in the first place, this is what exactly what I do. So there's many types of e-commerce, first of all. Um, what we're going to talk about is drop shipping because this is probably one of the most popular models. Um, popular because you don't have to hold inventory, you can sell anything that your manufacturer carries. But there's a correct way and a wrong way to do drop shipping. Um, first, we're going to talk about you utilizing platforms versus building your own brand slash website. So you can do drop shipping like. Um, or holding inventory with, with Amazon FBA or creating your own brand and you can also sell on websites you can drop ship on different websites like you know Walmart eBay Facebook marketplace um, I used to do that in the past as my very first type of e-commerce but I don't recommend it now if I were to restart simply because the effort that you're putting in you're really not building anything with Amazon you could definitely build a business that is more sellable in the future um amazon businesses do get more uh, a very high multiple compared to other e-commerce businesses but with amazon it's actually a lot harder in my opinion for most people to you know generate consistent cash flow every single month and with amazon just being that platform that controls everything you have to live by the rules you have to you know if you disagree with the rules you're just going to be booted off the platform so Amazon, you, there's not a lot of flexibility there. You have to follow the policies and the policies update every single, they update pretty often. I know I'm, well, I was in some Amazon dropshipping, uh, Facebook groups. Um, and I don't do that myself, Amazon dropshipping, but most of the people there have to like read all the policy, uh, policies every single month and like adapt their strategy and everything. Um, this is not to say that being an entrepreneur where you don't have to change up your strategy. You want to pick something that you know will work for a long time. And, and then you can build on that strategy. But having to change your entire business plan like every single um, six months or three months is just not feasible. So this is why we're talking about um, why I would rather do uh, Shopify or utilizing a building your own website and doing e-commerce that way um, the pro of doing that is um, obviously you have complete control you make up your own policy pages you have your own policies you have you're creating your own website you're basically creating your own business but there are some cons with this but the cons are really not cons they're only cons if you have a one-way point of view um, the number one con for someone that has experience, you know, dropshipping on Amazon or selling on Amazon, selling on these platforms and marketplaces is that they take care of all the traffic. You just, you know, make, post your listing, you know, optimize it, maybe run ads a little bit, maybe Amazon PPC. But for the most part, if you're selling on those platforms and marketplaces, you don't have to, you know, pay for ads. There's millions and millions probably billions of people going on that web on their website um, every single year month you know day there's so much traffic going to those especially Amazon it controls like 50% of all e-commerce sales so if you're selling on those platforms you might think that oh this is gonna be easy because there's so many people shopping on this platform already and if I were to make my own website I had to drive all this traffic myself the thing is Driving your own traffic and keeping all this traffic, monetizing it so you can repeat, have repeat customers. So you capture their email, you capture um, what they purchased from your website, you remarket to them. You have new items come to your website, you can remarket to them, bring them back. 
and overall you keep the customer base well Amazon you just you know it's a churn and burn kind of thing you, you sell a customer once you don't care if they buy again because you know they're shopping on Amazon already you really don't care about the customer so um, as well as with um, selling on your own website you have complete control meaning if you obviously if you use like a platform like Shopify you can't be scamming customers like obviously you're you have to be literally straight scamming customers to get kicked off the platform for most people I've never seen anyone like do running a legit shop of uh, business on Shopify get kicked off it's just I've never seen it um, uh, obviously you know if you it's your business you have your own policies and in, in your own business practices but if you get a ton of complaints and you're obviously scamming customers you can definitely get shut down from Shopify um, it's just you know a lot less rare because why would you be scamming people if you're gonna get shut down anyways it just doesn't make sense it's like churn and burn type of thing so with that being said I would rather if I were to restart or get into e-commerce again I would start doing uh, Shopify dropshipping now we're going to talk about which type of Shopify dropshipping because we just narrowed it down from um, e-commerce to dropshipping to marketplace versus your own website and obviously your web, your own website is better and then why we should do low ticket why there, there there's two differences we can do low ticket dropshipping and high ticket dropshipping um, the price point really doesn't matter I wouldn't say but I actually prefer um, you know somewhere in the middle but I do high ticket dropshipping for my business there's pros and cons to both because low ticket you can sell a lot of volume but you have to rely on most of the time demand you have to create your own demand and for most people that's way too hard and very un unsustainable it's very difficult to maintain from for many years and this is why we use demand capture meaning we there is already demand for these products and all you need to do is just show up there and you know provide good support um, answer their questions guide them through the buyer journey and you know get that cha-ching and your Shopify account so with that being said um, the main differences between low ticket and high ticket is you obviously you make more per sale but you have to provide more support for the customer and uh, this can be good or bad because you make more for sale but you have to optimize each customer you know uh, help them along the whole buyer journey with low ticket you know you don't have to necessarily call each customer up um, because you're doing way too much volume that would take forever with a high ticket business you know you could be selling 100 150 units and you you're probably gonna do like half a million dollars in sales every single month already with that much volume and that's only three orders a day but you have those orders that come in you have to you know even is even though it's three orders a day you have to make sure it's uh, moving uh, smoothly and customers are getting their items your damages if when they happen because they do happen are getting taken care of and um, you know just the whole buyer journey um, and then with high high ticket and low ticket high ticket is I would say it's better for most people um, starting out and the major perk of doing high ticket is that you really connect with established um, brands and manufacturers with low ticket you're selling stuff from you know these aren't even distributed there's just unbranded like un like generic stuff that you're selling which can work if you were to build a brand but for the most part many people are very bad at that and for most people it's very hard to attain you want to attain su uh, sustainable monthly cash flow I would still say using demand capture and working with brands that already have demand and selling them on your website you know having a catalog of different brands on your website is more sustainable for the years for many many years to come and this is why we just narrowed it down from if I were to start e-commerce again I would do high ticket Shopify dropshipping with um, domestic uh, and local suppliers um, so with that being said I hope you guys found some value if this all sounds gibberish to you 
and you're already in e-commerce, um, maybe you haven't discovered the other side, the better side of e-commerce yet. But if you're you know, new to e-commerce, hopefully I will you know, save you a ton of time, money, energy, and sweat, and guide you in the right direction of doing high ticket dropshipping, Shopify, the Shopify way, and connecting with real established brands that have um, consistent customers every single month for many, many months and years on end. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, click like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.